Hi class, it's Bill Berry again with a continuing video from our Week 1 Language Basics series. The first video had a quick introduction and talked about the first demo, did the first demo with you, which was some employee data. Uh, so we did customer name, age, and balance in that demo. Now we're going to talk a little bit about procedural decomposition and static methods. So I'm going to switch over to Word uh, because we want to do this design and I'm going to use SmartArt so we can use it there or you know we could certainly use it here as well but I'm going to use Word for now, common tool for that. So let me move this out of the way and let me put Word up here where you can see it and then let us create something that is useful. Let's do SmartArt. Uh, I like SmartArt for doing these kind of diagrams I'm going to do a hierarchy. I like this particular kind of hierarchy, even though I don't like the labeling. I do like the way it always um, organizes things in a very traditional tree structure, rather than putting uh, things on a little sideways, uh, you know, sideways label. So I think this is the easiest one. I'm going to create that. I'm going to change the design to a plain. Uh, color scheme and then I'm going to start by just deleting a whole bunch of text. I'm just going to delete everything that's here uh, and just start playing. So let's talk about doing payroll. So our top level node is going to be our main program and let's <clears throat> we're going to call that payroll. Now with the idea of procedural decomposition, the thing that we're doing and that we're going to underscore the fact that this is different than what you're going to see later with object oriented programming. We are not doing objects yet. We are doing the traditional breakdown. So the things that we're going to break out are things that we need to do. So they tend to be verb oriented, action oriented. And then this procedural decomposition position helps us take a complicated thing and break it down into easier things. So uh, payroll is going to be broken down into different chunks like we're going to input the weekly hours. So how many hours did each employee work this week? Then we're going to need to read the hourly wages, let's say from a file or from a database or something. And then we're going to have to calculate gross pay and then we're going to have to calculate the taxes and net pay and then finally we're going to print the checks. Yeah, I guess I should be consistent with my capitalization. Okay, so I'm going to print the checks. Now, the nice thing about this, it's easy to create hierarchies this way and you can keep doing, uh, you know, helper functions. So if you need to, you could, you know, you can do this, blah, 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 and keep making sub hierarchies very easily. So again, I like SmartArt for that. And it's a good tool if you're designing your own thing. I think it's a great tool. All right, so this is our idea of functional decomposition. Now, I'm going to move this out of the way since we've created it. So I'm just going to swap that out and put the PowerPoint back in the corner. All right, so we have this nice functional decomposition but what does it mean in terms of how we're going to implement it? So let's create a little Java project and then let's actually do this thing. So I'm going to start BlueJ once again. Uh, I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to put it on the desktop and I'm going to call this uh, Payroll. I'm making each of these separate just to keep things very nice and a new class called Payroll. All right, that's fine for now. All right, so we've got our class uh, class browser, and I'm going to double click, and I'm going to, as usual, I'm going to delete a bunch of stuff here. Let me do that real quick for you. All right, so I've put a little description. I've put my name and my version. Again, we're you want to keep up with these, and we're going to learn later why it's important to do these. And I've deleted all the the stuff in between here. So as usual, I'm going to create uh, the following kind of program because it's uh, it's just our, our traditional thing. Oops, I don't want that. I want public static void. I'm going to create a function called main. Its parameter is a string array called args. More on that later again. And I'm going to leave myself some room and I'm going to close so I don't forget. You can compile right away and see that it works. Okay, good. I've started out on a good note. All right, now, what you're going to do with this, the main program is going to drive all of this. So you actually know before you even start that main is going to call, payroll is going to call these things. So I can fill in those calls if I want to, or I can start creating the functions, but it doesn't really make any difference. So I'm going to start and create calls to these things, and then I'll create the functions themselves. Read hourly wages. All right, and I'll continue to fill those in for us. Okay, so I've filled those in. Now these names are a little bit long. We could probably abbreviate them a little bit, but the basic idea is there. Now we're going to want to create functions for each one of these things. So when we're doing procedural decomposition and thinking in this verb-oriented world, each one of these is going to become a public static 
method. So we're going to create public static methods for each of these things. Now we're going to talk more about parameters later, but for now let's create sort of a stub with none of that taken care of. So I'm going to use the word void. We're going to see what that means later. Basically means it has no return value. And then I'm going to create input weekly hours and I'm going to assume it has no parameters for now and again I'm going to start and stop curly braces so I remember that's the start and stop of that function. Now I'm going to do something similar for all of the rest of them. So now you'll see that all of these, each of these has been created as its own little function and we can actually, uh, you know, can see the structure of the program and we can compile it and it compiles. Now it won't do anything exciting. To stub these out and actually see them working, you might do something like this. System.out.println, uh, you know, input weekly hours is running. Right? And if you do something like that, then when you run the thing, you'll actually see those calls and you'll see the thing sort of, sort of coming together. Now, the important thing that we want to note here is main calls all of these things. Each one of these does its work and then returns control to main, which runs the next piece. Uh, the concept here that we want to be careful of is what some students are very tempted Even though to the user, to the, from our user's perspective, we have weekly hours input and then hourly wages next and calculate pay comes next. Even though the sequence looks like that, you do not force the sequence by calling read hourly wages from input weekly hours, right? You don't chain functions. You let the natural call sequence. So the way it works is payroll calls this, control returns to payroll. Payroll calls this, control returns to payroll, payroll calls this, etc. So you want to use that hierarchy and not force the chaining because you want these each to be independent little functions and you want them to be callable in different circumstances. You don't want them depend, to have to depend on the sequence. Uh, so you, you really do want those independent and so don't try to force that chaining. So that gives you a little start at uh, you know, creating something like that. And let's, uh, let's go back to our editor. So this gives you gives you a start at how to do functional decomposition, and uh, and you know how to set up this kind of program in a very simple way. So hopefully that's a useful piece to you. It should be pretty straightforward, and you're going to use this kind of procedural decomposition for a while until we get into objects. Uh, but you really want to uh, to know how to do that and to be careful about this chaining concept to not uh, to not go down that road. Let the call hierarchy be exactly as you've designed here as you've broken these things out and let control return naturally and don't force it uh, via chaining. So that's a quick little overview of uh, breaking things down into a hierarchy using procedural decomposition, which is not object oriented. It is instead very verb oriented, as you can see here. All of the names of these functions start with verbs, input, read, etc. So we'll continue in the next video with one more demo, and that's going to be summing up the numbers, which we'll start talking about functions and parameters and for loops and actually lots of great stuff in that video. So we'll continue there. So stay tuned for that next one, and thanks for watching this video.